I'll take my leave. Good day. Who was she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the dwarves to secure lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. Oh. Access to lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We're becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power, instead of comforting the masses. Mage circles started falling years ago. The Chantry was troubled even before the Divine's murder. Yet many people continue to bear it great love. We will not benefit from its decline. Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? Andraste's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. I suppose a shared faith can be useful when talking with strangers. Precisely. And these similar interests are merely where we begin. We must learn to think beyond our own wants, to secure peace in Thedas. How did someone so lovely and selfless go into Elysian politics, Lady Montillier? Well, that is, uh, <laughs> Really, you give me too much credit. While you're here, I do have a question. The remaining Grand Clerics sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the breach. If it were up to you, how would you reply? Will my answer change your reply to the Chantry? If Leliana, Cassandra, Cullen and I could agree on our official stance, I could answer that. We should decide soon. The revered mothers don't seem to know what to make of you. I'll tell the Chantry I was saved by circumstance, not divine intervention. Yet as rumors your Andraste's herald grow, the Grand Clerics may not believe such a humble reply. A difficult situation, and I thank you for your answer. A good day to you. If Fiona and her malcontents are joining us as allies, we need to be prepared. Abominations are inevitable. Cullen doesn't have enough Templars to handle incidents. Some of the rank and file need to be trained. Train our people, but keep it a secret. Let the mages think they're not being watched. I like the way you think, darling. I'll have a word with Cullen. We are reliant on his people, absolutely. There has never been a greater threat to mages than the Breach. Until it is closed, no one is safe. You have a low opinion of your fellow mages? It's not so much an opinion as grasping the obvious. Magic is dangerous, just as fire is dangerous. Anyone who forgets this truth gets burned. You're right, but Templars are a poor solution. They are men, and all men are flawed. That some fail does not mean that none should try. The fact remains that there is no cure for an abomination except death. Someone must strike the killing blow. Who shall lower the blade if not a Templar? Tell me something. As you will no doubt have a hand in shaping it, what future do you see for mages? Mages should be treated like anybody else. And yet, however much we may wish it, we are not like everyone else. Anyone can see that a chevalier is armed and dangerous, and they can see when his blade is about to strike. But can you spot a mage coming? And if he arrives at your stoop, can he leave his magic at the door? It's something to consider, my dear. Lovely. Your open support for the mages likely earned you enemies. Our agents will monitor the situation. If the most opposed can be identified, we may still turn this to our advantage. You're not planning assassinations, are you? I was planning to unleash Josephine on them. She kills with kindness. Regardless, I applaud you for the courage to stand up for the mages. In Redcliffe, you sacrificed yourself so that I could return here. Of course I did. 
One small life in exchange for a second chance at history? I always loved a bargain. It was still a sacrifice, and still noble. And I would do it again. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Halamshiral? Cows milking farmers? Give me time. I'm sure I'll surprise you. I suspect that's untrue. Unless you strip yourself naked and allow the Chantry to flog you into repentance. Now that would surprise me. I do wonder if you've considered what the support of yours will do. For mages in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given southern mages license to, well, be like mages back home. I don't believe that. It's true. The conditions here are different. Southern mages aren't used to ruling. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the South. Templars, proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed by inches. Not that this is reason to oppress us. Still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. Have you gone to see Alexius yet? He's in the cells. Not yet, no. I saw him before they locked him up. He looked despondent, broken. Not the man I remember, nor the one I want to. I suppose the Inquisition will judge him eventually. I wonder if there's any chance they'll show him mercy. He hardly deserves it, but for Felix's sake. I can't help hoping there's something left of the man I once knew. The Mage Rebellion joins the Inquisition. I've got to admit, that's a twist I didn't see coming. One thing you saw in the future worries me. I mean, it was all bad. But Red Lyrium and Ferelden infecting people and growing out of them, that's bad. Finding more of it really punches a hole in my Red Lyrium at the temple was a coincidence theory. How long does it take for Red Lyrium to grow? How fast can it spread? It took years to infect people in Kirkwall, but no one there was actually ingesting the stuff. This Elder One managed to take the worst thing I can think of and make it worse. That's an accomplishment. The Inquisition has the numbers to track down all this Lyrium and destroy it. I hope so. I don't want to think about what happens if it starts a plague. I've got people trying to find out where the red stuff came from. I think maybe we should make that a priority. But that's enough doom and gloom. You just won a big victory for the Inquisition. What are you going to do to celebrate? I was planning to put my feet up. Maybe grab a nap. You? Whatever I do, it'll be as far from Cassandra as I can get. Things should be calm around here for at least the next hour. Take a moment to enjoy it. If the world's about to end, I'm sure the Seeker will let us know. And what are we supposed to do, exactly? What you always do, complain. We've already spoken with Commander Cullen. No one listens. We want better quarters. We want the Templars kept at a distance. And some respect for... This is not the Circle. You mages are our allies, not our wards. Act like it. How are we supposed to... Deal with it. It never ends, evidently. You don't need to tell me that. I just don't know who told them I'm the one to yell at. Is it that bad? The mages are here as equals. They need to get used to what that means. It is your doing, after all. You created this alliance. I had to think on my feet, and I did what I could. Oh. I do sound like I'm blaming you, don't I? I don't disapprove. In fact, you did well. You made a decision when it needed to be made. And here we are. I wish I could say this was my doing. <laughs> I am rather clever, aren't I? Close the breach. Then I'll agree with you.